Okay, so this solutions video is for uh, what I'm calling the rest of wave phenomena or wave behaviors um, that is not Doppler effect or interference, so that would include standing waves, resonance, and diffraction, um, and some other stuff. Beats is a wave phenomenon, but I don't know if there's any questions on beats in here. Um, so, here's the first worksheet, and the questions kind of go through the entire thing. So here's page one that I'm gonna scroll through quickly, and page two is right here. And I'm doing this quickly so that you can scrub the video to whatever problem you wanna find so that the worksheet is right here in front of you um, so that you don't have to go find it. Um, I just think it's nice to have. As I've said before, I would write on the worksheet, but one, um, getting this, there's a way to get it so that I can pinch to zoom, but it's really annoying and the resolution's not great. Um, and also I like working on separate paper where you actually have room to write. That's why when you guys do your work separately in your notebook, I think that's a good idea because on these worksheets, they don't give you a lot of room to write or to work. So there's the first worksheet right there. Okay, the first question makes reference to a standing wave. Um, and standing waves, the way you make a standing wave, first of all, it's called that because it doesn't go anywhere. A traveling wave actually goes somewhere, like a water wave moving through the water travels through the water. A standing wave doesn't actually go anywhere. If you want to see a standing wave, pluck a guitar string. Um, that wave actually bounces back and forth between the two fixed points of that string, but it looks like it just kind of vibrates in place yeah, it does. It's a standing wave. Now, standing waves, you need uh, two moving uh, waves, two moving um, periodic waves. They don't have to be transverse, but they do have to be periodic. Not just one pulse, but a, a series of pulses, a periodic wave. You need two of them. They need to be moving, and they need to be exactly the same. Same amplitude, frequency, wavelength, and speed, except moving in opposite directions. And so as they move, they, uh, they shift into and out of phase. When they're completely in phase, you get maximum constructive interference and you get the largest possible wave they can make. Um, that's when crests are meeting crests and troughs are meeting troughs. Uh, if you have maximum destructive interference, they are completely out of phase. That's a 180 degree phase difference. And then crests are meeting troughs. Now, since they have both waves have the same amplitude, they cancel each other at that point. Um, and so with a standing wave, you wind up with a uh, double amplitude wave, then nothing. Then a double amplitude wave, then nothing. And then it just goes back and forth, back and forth, and it makes that standing wave. Um, if you're looking at the worksheet, I'm looking at it right now. A classic example of a standing wave is at number six. We're actually gonna get to number six in a bit. But that picture shows how a standing wave vibration looks. Um, you could have it as simple as question one, which we're on right now, uh, which is called the first fundamental. It's the simplest you can get. There are two nodes there and one anti-node. The nodes are the points of maximum destructive interference where there is no motion of the medium. So node is no motion. In between the nodes are the anti-nodes, the point where you get maximum motion. So in the case of these two people doing jump rope for the person in the middle, the rope moves the most in the middle, that's where the anti-node is. You're getting maximum constructive interference there and you get the, the highest amplitude, whereas at where the people are holding the rope, you get no motion, there's a node there. Um, so it's telling us in the problem, it's 4.3 meters from person to person and it wants the wavelength of the standing wave. So let me sketch that out. I wanna show you something with that. So that's kind of what the wave looks like in the picture. You have the people on the sides and the person in the middle. But if you look at it, that's only really half of a cycle. That would be the rest of the wave and the full wave cycle would go kind of like that. So that would be one wave cycle right there. But that's not what the picture shows. The picture just shows this much. But as I just showed you, that's half of a wave cycle. So one wave cycle, the length of one wave cycle is the wavelength of the wave. 
Well, if what's shown is half of a wave cycle, then it must be half of the wavelength. And the question says that from person to person is 4.3 meters, so 4.3 meters is half of the wavelength. Therefore, the wavelength must be 8.6 meters, double that. So there you go. Now, there's a, a fact about standing waves, and it doesn't matter <clears throat> what harmonic you're on, how many nodes and anti-nodes there are. There's one fact about uh, standing waves in a string that are fixed on either end, which is what you're going to see the most often. That's what you see in choice one. That's what you see in pictured in, I'm sorry, in number one. That's what you see pictured in number six. And that's uh, for those patterns from node to node, from one node to the next node is half a wavelength, always. So they say the distance between consecutive nodes from one node to the next node is half of a wave, always. Now, number three is not about standing waves. I guess it is in the fact that some sound waves are standing waves, but um, it talks about sound hitting a glass and then the glass breaks. Um, I right now have a glass on my desk. I'm speaking, uh, the glass isn't breaking. The window right here is not breaking because of my voice or the lawnmower outside, thanks landscaper. Um, but it's not my landscaper either, I mow my own lawn, but whatever. Um, and so yeah, it's not any sound that can do this, but you can get sound waves to shatter a glass. And this is actually because of something called resonance. Resonance is a phenomenon um, where almost every object that is made of one thing, like a crystal or a glass or a water molecule, um, has what's called a natural frequency. Watch for that phrase, natural frequency. Let me write that down. And the natural frequency is of an object is if you hit it with a wave at that frequency, the object doesn't just vibrate, but the amplitude of the vibration increases. So for instance, my glass right here that's on my desk, can you hear that? There's my glass. Um, the glass that's on my desk, yeah, it has a resonant frequency and it is vibrating with my voice right now. I can't see it, but it, it is vibrating as my voice hits it. Um, but the vibration, it just kind of vibrates along. The amplitude of that vibration doesn't increase. Um, a good example of resonance is when you push someone on a swing. If you have like your little cousin or your neighbor, I don't know, any old kid on a swing, doesn't matter who, you take and put a kid on a swing and you push them. In order to go higher, you have to push them at the right time. It's, yeah, I guess you could push them harder, but it's not really a question of how hard you push them, it's a question of when. Even when you yourself are on a swing, um, I was teaching, you know, I think my kids now know how to swing, but I remember when I was teaching them how to swing, like in terms of like pumping on a swing. And pumping on a swing is all about when do you stick out your legs and when do you tuck them in. It's a question of timing. Um, and it's the same thing when you push someone on a swing, it's a question of timing. Same thing when, if you were, let's say you sing at a glass and the glass starts to vibrate. When the glass completes one vibration cycle, if the wave is ready, if the, if the wave, that wavelength is the same, or the, or the frequency of the wave is the same as the frequency of the glass, this, as soon as the glass completes one cycle of vibration, there's another wave ready to hit it. So it starts to vibrate a little bit, then it starts to vibrate more, then it starts to vibrate more, and then it really starts to vibrate. Um, you can actually see this for yourself if you have a nice wine glass. Um, you can take an empty wine glass and put a straw in it. Um, if you sing, pluck the wine glass first because that's the resonant frequency of the glass. If you sing at the glass, and you're getting close to the resonant point, you'll see this, the straw start to dance. Um, it will literally start to bounce around the glass. That's because the glass is vibrating. It's not vibrating, vibrating a little bit, it's vibrating a lot. Now, if you have a very clear, very strong voice, you can actually get that glass to vibrate so much, get the amplitude to increase so much that you break the glass. That's what number three is getting at. Um, one, that's really hard to do without amplification, without a speaker. Uh, two, if you can do it and you break a lovely wine glass, 
um, don't don't say that I told you to do it because then your folks will be mad and then they're gonna blame me and put me on the hook for a wine glass. Um, but I bet there are some of you, especially if you're a good singer, um, who can get the straw to to dance in a glass. I would use like a wine glass, something that that's not thick and clunky like a water glass. Um, but but that that's a resonant effect. Um, same thing happens to if you're in a car. Or I just I just saw a resonance the other day in my son's room. Um, his uh, ceiling fan was at a certain speed, and the ceiling fan was like vibrating a little bit, and then the vibration got really loud. Um, if you change the speed of the fan, the vibration will stop. The reason why it was vi- I mean it was a loose part, but the reason why it was so loud was because that loose part was resonating with the frequency of the fan blades. How quick you know. How, how quickly they completed one cycle. Um, it was a resonance effect. And uh, another good example of resonance is a microwave. The way microwaves work, microwave radiation is non-ionizing. It's not gonna like give you cancer. It's actually very close to cell phone radiation. But that particular frequency of microwaves inside of a microwave oven causes water molecules to resonate. So water molecules don't just vibrate a little bit, they vibrate a lot when they're in a microwave. You get a big vibration, you get heat, and that's how you heat stuff up. But you can only heat stuff up that has water in it. Like 99% of our food has water in it, so it works for most things, but not everything. So the answer is three, the wave phenomenon in question is resonance. So yeah, that's about uh, 12 minutes in, only two problems done. But I wanted to explain the phenomenons first, phenomena first, um, so that I can refer back to it um, in later problems. So there you go. Just for what it's worth before we move on, one thing that immediately leapt to my mind is what if you try to heat things that are not water, like 100% alcohol? Um, and... Uh, If there's no water there, does it still heat? Um, And what's the relationship between molecule and resonant frequency? I don't know. I couldn't find anything online. The best I can find is that symmetric molecules like carbon tetrachloride uh, apparently do not resonate or heat in a microwave. Um, Don't mess with that. It's a dry cleaning fluid. It's like (laughs) not good stuff. Um, But other asymmetrical molecules will and uh, they say that pure alcohol will heat in a microwave, but it's super dangerous because it makes vapors and alcohol vapors are flammable and you could literally blow up the microwave. Uh, so do not try that at home. Um, but as for why does that work? I don't know. I have a friend who's a chemist. I asked him. We'll see. Okay, number six. We have a standing wave, classic standing wave pattern. Nodes and antinodes shown. So like I said, where the waves cross, where there's no motion, that would include the walls. Those are the nodes, the points of maximum destructive interference where there's no motion. So including the walls, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Did I count that right? Yes. So there are six nodes there. So it's either choice uh, three or choice four. And then the antinodes are between the nodes. So there are five antinodes, not 10. People mess that up. They think that, oh, like the tops and the bottoms, you got to count them both. No, the antinodes are actually kind of like in the middle. Um, That's a static image of a moving uh, wave pattern Um, and not moving going left or right, but it's vibrating. And so the nodes are the the crossing points there. There are six of them and then the antinodes are between them. So there are six nodes and five antinodes, choice three. There are your nodes. And there are the anti-nodes, the points of maximum constructive interference where you get the most motion. Number eight, standing waves. I described standing waves uh, earlier, but the easiest way to make standing waves is by taking a wave and reflecting it back upon itself. Um, So standing waves are produced most often by uh, periodic waves reflecting from a barrier. You take a moving periodic wave, reflect it off of a wall, it comes back right onto itself. Everything about it is the same because it's the same wave just reflected, but moving in the opposite direction. So they shift into and out of phase. So eight is four reflected from a barrier. Number 11, classic example of resonance. 
Um, if you play a note on a trumpet, you can actually get a snare drum or any, it doesn't have to be a trumpet. Trumpets are loud, it doesn't have to be a trumpet. But um, the snare on the bottom of the drum will vibrate along with you um, and that is resonance. When you play an instrument, um, suppose you're in the music room and you play an instrument, the drums in the back and um, like the xylophone and whatever, everything is vibrating with your instrument. But if it vibrates to the point that the amplitude increases so loud that you can hear it, that is a resonance thing. Um, that will only happen at one note though, at a certain note, at the uh, natural resonant frequency of that drum. It's not gonna happen with all of the notes on the trumpet, but that's a resonance thing, choice one. All right, 16, we have another standing wave pattern and A is pointing at a node. Um, that's the point where there's no motion. And if there's no motion, that's because of destructive interference. Crests are meeting troughs at that point and there's no motion as a result. So 16 is two, a node for destructive interference. Just be careful, usually the word anti means against or you know prevent or whatever, um, but the destructive interference point is the node. The anti-node is the opposite of that, and it's the point of constructive interference, max constructive interference, where you get the most motion. Um, but the way I like to think of it is you get no motion at a node, and the opposite of the node is the anti-node. Um, so I don't know if that helps, but there you go. 19, I'm not really wild about this question because I'm not sure that this is actually a resonance effect. It's more something called slipstick friction. Um, but if you pluck a glass or rub your finger across it um, like that, and uh, if the, the glass starts to sing, starts to vibrate, um, then yeah, that is the natural frequency of the glass and resonance is the best choice for this question. So 19 is one. Refraction is a light thing. We're gonna be getting to that later. Reflection is when you reflect a wave off an object or reflect a light wave off a mirror or something. Rarefaction, if you go back to wave characteristics, um, in a longitudinal wave, when you have compressions or when you get the maximum pressure and then the rarefaction is the other, other part of the wave cycle where you get the least pressure. So a rarefaction is a part of a longitudinal wave. So um, that's just explaining the wrong answers. The right answer is resonance, 19 is one. 20, very, very similar to number six. We have another standing wave pattern fixed at both ends. Wants to know the number of nodes and anti-nodes. I remember the two walls as being nodes. So including the walls, that's one, two, three, four, five nodes. And the anti-nodes are between the nodes, so there are four anti-nodes, not eight. Eight's not a choice anyway, but it's four anti-nodes. Five nodes, four anti-nodes, choice three. Just don't confuse your nodes and antinodes. The answer is choice three, not choice four. Don't confuse nodes and antinodes. 22, you have a 256 hertz uh, tuning fork. You put it near another tuning fork and it starts to sing along with it. Um, that's because that's the resonant frequency of the fork. And if you have another fork at that frequency, then the non-vibrating fork is going to start to vibrate with it. Amplitude of the vibration increases as what happens with resonance, that's the answer, choice two, um, but the second tuning fork starts to sing along. And uh, so yeah, 22, resonance, choice two. So like I've said before, these are definitely science questions, not math questions. It's the science-y part of physics, not the math-y part of physics. Um, and uh, a lot of them are just like, hey, here's this thing, what is it? Um, and it really boils down to definitions. So anyway, um, number 26. Number 26, one thing causes vibrations and another thing. Hey, isn't that just like number 22? You bet it is. Is the answer of choice two resonance as well? Yes, it is. Next. Again, if some of these questions seem repetitive, it's because um, there were questions looking at the same topic, but on different Regents exams. So there are like slightly different ways of asking about the same thing. Uh, 27 looks different, let's take a look. So 27 has a drill making vibrations um, and a mass is hanging off the other side. Um, and the amount of weight there hanging actually affects the wave, but we're not gonna get into that. I can see that the frequency of the drill, uh, and so the frequency of the wave is 20 Hertz and the distance from one end to the other is three meters. I can see that from the picture that is one wave cycle is three meters. 
27 wants to know, what's the wavelength of the waves? I can see from the picture that one wave cycle is three meters, so that's the wavelength, three meters. 28 wants the speed of the wave and the rope. Hey, look at that, a calculation. Let's give it a whirl. Write down my givens. Frequency, 20 hertz. Wavelength, 3 meters. And then the uh, speed, once another speed, V equals F lambda. Whoa, there it is. 60 meters per second is your speed. If you've got that obscure reference of the day, good for you. Tag team in the house. Okay, 29 and 30. So there's a, uh, a reading here about um, tape player. It says old television commercial. Yeah, they didn't mention the brand name. It was a commercial for Memorex tapes. Um, and uh, yeah, it's totally possible, even on a cassette tape, um, to break a glass, especially if you play it loud enough. To actually break the glass to achieve an, the correct uh, natural frequency of the glass and um, have the right amplitude to do that without amplification is tough. Um, but if you hook that sucker up to a speaker, yeah, for sure, you can um, break the glass. And it is a good ad for the tape because the tape is getting at that it hit the frequency, it recorded the frequency perfectly, and it did. Um, so anyway, in that explanation, I actually just answered number 29. Two properties that a singer's voice must have to shatter the glass. You have to have the right frequency, the right pitch, the natural frequency of the glass and you also have to be loud enough. You can hit that pitch very quietly and the glass will resonate, but it's not gonna break. Now the reading kind of gets at this. It says why the glass would not break if the tape player did not play back at an accurate speed. And it says in the reading, it says all that is important is that the frequency is recorded and played back correctly. The frequency, the natural frequency needs to be recorded properly and then played back at the same speed. You may know from a recording, um, this was obvious from vinyl records and from uh, magnetic cassette uh, cassettes. It's not easy to do, um, I don't think you can do it at all, on a CD. And you can uh, mess with playback speed digitally, but you know, like for instance, say you take a YouTube video, if you decrease the speed, um, if someone's speaking, their voice gets lower. And if you increase the speed, their voice gets higher pitched the speed of playback does affect the frequency of the sound. So if it was too slow, the frequency would be too low. If the speed was too high, the frequency would be too high. You want the frequency to be right on point. So that's why the speed matters. So like I said, sometimes you get very, very similar questions. 36 is so similar to number 11, the effect is resonance. The phrase natural frequency is a dead giveaway for a resonance question. I mentioned this before about how you pump, pump your legs when you're on a swing, but natural frequency, boom, that is like, you know, red flag right there. The answer is resonance, choice four. There's a lot going on with this question. X, Y, A, F, double, triple. Look, standing waves. Everything about them is the same except for their direction. So if wave X is going east with frequency F and amplitude A, wave Y needs to go west with frequency F and amplitude A. Number 40, standing wave question. What's the distance from one node to the next node? I mentioned that before. It is one half of a wave that is lambda over two, choice three. 42, blah, 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 natural frequency, choice three, resonance. Um, that nat natural frequency bit is a dead giveaway. Ah, diffraction. So it says wave goes through an opening in a barrier. Uh, the amount of diffraction you get depends on the wavelength of the wave. Um, Diffraction gets its own worksheet. I'm going to get back into that um, probably in another video. I have six minutes left to cover all of the diffraction uh, worksheet, and I don't think I'll need a lot of time, but I need more than six minutes. So that's going to be a separate video. Um, but the deal with diffraction, that's as the wave spreads around a gap in a wall. Um, if the size of the gap in the wall is close to the wavelength of the wave, you get the most diffraction effect. Um, any larger, if that gap is any larger than the wavelength, you get less diffraction effect. So you get the most if the size of the opening is close to the wavelength of the wave. So 45 is 2. Man, talk about a similar question. Um, look back at 22. They even use the same frequency. Resonance doesn't have to happen with 256 hertz. 256 hertz is middle C. 512 is high C. 128 is low C. 
Um, it's 256 is used a lot, but resonance happens with anything. I think 440 hertz is A, maybe. Um, and uh, so it doesn't matter what the frequency is. It doesn't have to be 256. Anyway, 48 is resonance, choice four. And again, just to be clear, this is kind of a wave characteristics thing, but I still think it's neat. When we talk about 256 hertz, if an instrument is playing uh, middle C, 256 hertz, that's 256 cycles per second. That means that suppose you have like a clarinet playing middle C. That means the air inside that clarinet is bouncing back and forth inside that clarinet 256 times every second. Uh, I think that's cool. All right, so let's knock out two questions with, uh, in, with, with one stone because um, the answers are both resonance and they're both examples of resonance. 53 doesn't say natural frequency, but it says particular frequency, um, and uh, that is resonance. If you blow across a bottle, especially a glass bottle, um, and, uh, and you make a sound, I wish I had a bottle right now, I don't. Uh, I still have my glass from before, but that's, I can't do it with the glass. Uh, but that's a resonance effect. Um, if you do it with a big jug and you get like a deep sound, that's pretty cool. And then 54, uh, wind cutting across the um, power lines as if they were like violin strings. Uh, it's called an Aeolian harp. Um, it is called that, it's a, but Aeolian is a fancy word that means wind. Uh, so why not just call it a wind harp? It's all fancy, Aeolian. It's a bougie name. All right, so uh, that's resonance as well. And so, but 55 is not resonance. So let's um, wrap it up. That's the last one from this worksheet. And then obviously, based on the time that's left, I'm not gonna knock out 13 problems in the diffraction worksheet on this video, so we will get another video. 55. All right, so we have a speaker making a sound, and there's a gap, there's a doorway, and there's a student. And a student does not have a direct line to the speaker. So you might think that the student wouldn't hear anything because the wall is getting in the way of the speaker. And that as the sound travels through the doorway, Maybe if the student was in line with the doorway, they would hear something, um, but if they're not in line, they don't. You would be wrong. The student does hear the speaker because of diffraction. It's a great example of diffraction. Um, if diffraction did not happen, the sound would just go in a straight line through the doorway, and the student wouldn't hear a thing unless they were in the line of the speaker and the doorway. Um, but the sound does diffract, it wraps around that opening, fills the room and the student does hear the speaker. Um, and so 55 is a great example of diffraction choice four. Now, just a word about that. I have said that light also acts like a wave. Is like, well, if light acts like a wave, then why doesn't the image of the speaker fill the room? Why can't the student see the speaker because of the light diffraction around the doorway? And that would be a great question. Remember though, that diffraction to get the most effect when the wavelength is close to the size of the opening. The wavelength of the sound coming out of the speaker is close to the size of the doorway. So you get a lot of wrapping around the gap. But the light, the image of the speaker is a super small wavelength, way smaller than the size of the doorway. So um, if the, the image of the speaker does enter the doorway, but does not wrap around. So if the student were standing in line with the doorway and the speaker, they would see the speaker. But if they step to the left or to the right, they see the wall because the light, the image of the speaker that they see diffracts a teeny tiny amount around the edge of the doorway, uh, but really not at all because the wavelength is much smaller than the doorway. But the sound with a much longer wavelength um, does fill the room. Um, now, you could say, well, then does light diffract at all? You bet it does. Radio waves have a very long wavelength. And that's why Wi-Fi can travel all over a building. Wi-Fi can enter a doorway and diffract around the edges of a doorway. So if you have a Wi-Fi transmitter in one room and that those radio waves hit a doorway, they'll diffract around the doorway and fill the room. And so you'll still get signal even though there's a wall there. So light does diffract um, just like sound does, but you get the most diffraction effect when the size of the opening is close to the wavelength of the wave going through it. Um, so there you go. And I have less than 30 seconds left. Um, so I'll leave you with this little illustration. A guy is singing and as he sings, and as he sings his vocal cords vibrate and there's a standing wave in his vocal cords which is amplified by his head.
And if you were singing at a wall with a gap in it, if the gap were close to the wavelength of the sound wave, it would spread into the room. And we have one second left. Ah.